first uh, heat wave of the season is here and we are ready. We expect the, the National Weather Service to issue a heat advisory uh, for New York City that would be in effect from Thursday, June 20th through Friday, June 21st. Uh, high heat and humidity are also being forecast over the next few days. Uh, we expect to see temperature in the low 90s on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, cooling centers will be open uh, starting tomorrow, and we expect to hit uh, peak heat on Thursday and Friday with the heat index possibly reaching uh, 99 degrees. Uh, we want to be clear, uh, this is extremely hot for June, and New Yorkers should not underestimate the heat. Mayor Adams with a public announcement warning New Yorkers that it is going to be hot this week, like really hot. We could be seeing our first heat wave of the year, kind of hot. City officials um, are going to be doing their part to help keep people cool. But I was listening to what you were saying, Danny. It's really the heat indices yes. that has me like, what? Triple digits. Because that's what your body's reading, right? That's what you got to prepare yourself for. And you heard all of that from the mayor. Now you're going to hear it from a meteorologist because it's the kind of heat that you really have to mm -hmm. take seriously. So I want to start with just what is a heat wave, right? Well, yes. it, the definition actually varies by location. For us here in the Northeast, it's considered three consecutive days with highs at or above 90 degrees. If you're in Phoenix or Vegas, that's not a big deal, right? But for us, our bodies haven't had time to adjust to that. We're also looking Looking at the first uh, 90s of the year here in the city. So again, your body hasn't quite acclimated just yet. When you have the combination of heat and humidity, uh, what we expect with our air temperature low to mid 90s, our heat indices will be approaching that triple digit mark and our lows through the overnight hours. The second half of the week will be in the 70s. So your body doesn't have time to recover. Why is humidity a big deal? Well, because sweat is your body's cooling mechanism. And when it's humid, the sweat doesn't actually evaporate on your skin. So you, your body can't cool itself effectively. You're dehydrating yourself because you are sweating, but it's not evaporating and actually cooling. So that's why that can be dangerous and it really puts a strain on your body to cool itself. Added stress to the heart, to kidneys. That's why uh, people with pre-existing conditions or older people have are, are especially susceptible to heat-related illnesses. So let's break down the difference here. Heat stroke is where you really got to just call 911 right away. That's mm. when you have the throbbing headache. You're not sweating anymore. Your skin is red hot and dry. You have a rapid strong pul pulse. And if, and if anyone loses consciousness, that's how you got to know. Call 911. The step before that is heat exhaustion. That's where you can just take yourself inside, try to cool yourself down. That's where you have excessive sweating. You're faint or dizzy and your skin is cool, pale or clammy. So knowing the difference is really important so you know how seriously to take it. But again, if you aren't sweating anymore, that's when you got to call 911. Oh. It's probably heat stroke. So how do you how do you avoid that, right? Drink plenty of fluids. Keep in mind when you're sweating, you're also losing electrolytes, you're losing salt. So it's important to replenish that as well. Stay in air conditioning. I know it's not possible for everyone. If you work outside, delivery drivers, construction workers, if you're one of those people, you got to limit your time in the direct sunlight. Dress in lightweight and loose fitting clothing. Avoid that overexertion and take lots of breaks. Uh, the city, part of their plan is actually distributing these cooling kits to people that have to work outside. And the city says that they're distributing those directly to workers. So contact your supervisor, right. ask how to get those because that can really help you. And you know, it's all on us to check on ourselves and our neighbors, the pets, keep them safe. And the pets, that's another big thing, right? How do you protect them? Aww. Know the signs of dehydration and overheating in your pets. We're talking excessive panting, drooling, fast heart rate. Uh, have plenty of fresh, clean water ready and shade. If they have to take bathroom breaks outside, make sure there's a, a shady spot. And don't over-exercise your dog during peak heating hours. A lot of people would think just shave, shave their coats, right? Well, their coats can actually protect from overheating and sunburn. And never leave your pets in a parked car or have lots of time on the asphalt because I wanted to show you kind of the the temperature difference when the air temp is 95, which we'll get close to it later this week, <gasps> even on grass in the sun, it can be up to 105 degrees, concrete 125 and on asphalt 140. So those pets paws can burn very quickly. If it's too hot for your bare feet, definitely too hot for them.